Okay. So um, what I'm going to do today is, is uh, continue the discussion from last time about um, about uh, fiber sequences and cofiber sequences. Uh, so the uh, The, the big idea that we introduced last time um, was this notion of homotopy limit and homotopy colimit. And, uh, and what we said is that there's a, th there are some specific examples of those that are really important to, um, to dealing with spectra, uh, which are called getting kicked out of the Zoom meeting. Um, hold on. Yeah, okay. Let's pause the room. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, right, so we, we, what we said is that there's, um, given a map F from X to Y, you can consider the, the homotopy pushout. Um, so the homotopy co-limit of the diagram that looks like this. And Z is called the cofiber of the map F. Let me write this in a better way. Uh, Right, so this is an this is an object that's well defined up to homotopy, um, and it's possible to be fairly explicit about it. Uh, so, for example, if you replace both x and y by cofibrin objects, um, and one of these two maps by a cofibration, um, then z is modeled by the actual pushout of that diagram. So, for example, um, if x and y are cofibrin. Um, we can factorize the map from x to the point by a cofibration followed by an acyclic fibration. And this object in the middle is typically called the cone on x. Um, then you can take the actual push out of the diagram that looks like this. Okay, so this is uh, the cone on X glued to Y along X, and this is a model for the for the cofiber of the map from X to Y. Okay. Uh, likewise, um, there's there's a notion of the homotopy fiber of a map. So um, so a homotopy fiber is something that fits into a pullback square. Um, A, a homotopy pullback square like this. And again, um, one of the ways to construct this fiber is if X and Y are fibrant, then um, factor the map from the point to Y as a an acyclic cofibration followed by a fibration and call the space, uh, call the object in the middle, the path space of Y. Um, so, so then you can model this fiber uh, as the pullback of, uh, as, the, as the actual pullback. Um, of this diagram. Okay, so this is the, this is X uh, cross over Y, the path space of Y. Okay. So there are a few, um, there are a few basic examples of this. Uh, one of them is, um, if we take the map from X to 
the point, then the push out, the homotopy push out of this diagram is the suspension of X. And likewise, the homotopy pullback of this diagram is the loop space of X. Um, another, another family of somewhat trivial examples comes from taking an inclusion of X into as a wedge sum end of something. So if we take the inclusion map from X into X co-product with Y, then the, the, uh, the co-fiber of that map is just gonna be Y. And likewise, the projection, the, the fiber of the projection map from X cross Y to X uh, is also going to be Y. Okay. Um, now, one thing I should say about this is that uh, although obviously we're most interested in, in doing this in spectra, um, most of what I have to say today can, can be made to work in any pointed model category. So, um, so a pointed model category is one with a zero object. Um, so the, um, we've required model categories to have all small limits and co-limits. So in particular, they have an initial object and a final object. And the requirement here is that, um, is that the initial object is equivalent to the final object. Um, and it looks like the screen froze, but it should. Yeah, it just kicked me out again. All right, any questions about any of this? Just a quick one. Do you not need uh, like isomorphism on the nose for the, zero, the initial and the terminal object? Oh, I'm sorry, that's that's a good point. I, I, I mean isomorphism. Um, so, Does it matter? It, it feels like it shouldn't matter, but um, at least in the, the 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 like two examples that I have in mind, we have an actual isomorphism. Um, so I'm just thinking of the spaces, like spaces we don't have a zero object, right? But uh, right, but but point is spaces we do. So that's one of the one of the two examples I have in mind. Um, okay. Yeah, pointed, pointed spaces and, and spectra uh, um, both have a both have a zero object, which is a zero object on the nose. But yeah, it, it feels like it shouldn't matter. Okay, so um, right, so so I'm I'm going to be trying to say a bunch of things in this kind of model um, independent language. Um, and the, the key point is really that it's possible to talk about things like path spaces and, um, and cones just by using um, the structure of a model category. So, uh, and I realize it's, uh, it's frozen again. Um, I'm quite sorry about this. If I want to write, I have to connect to the uh, to the Wi-Fi, and and for some reason my laptop really doesn't like to connect to the Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. Anyone know any good jokes?
Okay, I seem to be back. Um, okay. Okay, um, so the first observation that I want to make about um, about uh, about these things um, are that uh, fiber sequences and cofiber sequences can be um, oh I, I I guess I didn't say what that is so so when I say a, a cofiber sequence um, I mean a sequence of maps where the second map is the is the the cofiber of the first. So this is supposed to be the cofiber of this map from X to Y. Um, and in a second, we're, we're going to realize that there's a little bit more structure on, on this. And so sometimes it's better to write a, a little bit more than, than this sequence. Um, but, but this is the basic idea. OK, so the first observation um, is that cofiber sequences can be continued. So if we take the cofiber of the map from X to Y, uh, so this is a homotopy pushout square. Um, and now let's also take the cofiber of this map from Y to Z. Okay, so this right-hand square is a homotopy pushout square. Um, now, just as, as in the case of ordinary pushout squares, um, there's, a, there's a basic property of these things, which you can prove that, um, that if the two squares are homotopy pushout squares, then the whole rectangle is also a homotopy pushout square. Okay, so uh, so this is also a homotopy pushout. Um, but as we know, the the homotopy pushout of the square that has x in the top left corner and the zero object in the in the other corners is the suspension of x. Okay, so if you take the cofiber of a cofiber, um, you get a map to the suspension. Uh, likewise, if you have a fiber sequence, I'm really sorry about this. Um, I guess I could also try to write on the board, which might be a little bit more reliable. Um, uh, Why are libraries so tall? Because Why? they contain many stories. Thanks, Eva. Love it. Um, okay, so uh, can how well can you guys see this board behind me? I've I've done this once before. I'm not sure how much detail the the camera picks up. I think if we like if we pin your thing, it makes it full screen on our end. So it might yeah. be easy. I can I think I can see it when I pin it. Um, there's some way to there's some way to to like spotlight myself, right? Um, you can share your camera, I think. I am sharing my camera. I mean, um, like share share screen and then select your camera as the share screen. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we can just pin you, um, as as was said. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, why why don't you all why don't you all do that? Um, 
Uh, only problem with that is then, I, I guess if you pin yourself then on the recording, it will show, um, show it properly. So you probably want to do that. Um, sorry, how do I do that? Uh, if you hover over your... Okay. Can everyone hear me? Uh, good, all right. Yeah, so, so the, the point that I was trying to make is that um, given a cofiber sequence, uh, so a map from X to Y, and the cofiber of F, we have a natural map from Y to the cofiber, and the cofiber of G can be identified with the suspension of X. And likewise, um, given a fiber sequence, where this space F is the fiber of P, then there's a natural map from the fiber of P to X. Let's call that, I don't know, Q. And the fiber of Q can be identified with the loop space of Y. Um, okay, so clearly we can continue this process. We can take the cofiber of this, and this would give us a map to the suspension of y. And we can take the fiber of this, and this would give us a map from the loop space of x. Um, and it's worth being a little bit more precise about this. So obviously, the, the claim that we would like to make is that, um, is that this is the suspension of f, and this is the, the loop space of p. Um, and uh, there's, an, there's a kind of annoying thing that happens here where you have to sort of introduce a sign in some place, and this is, this is one of the places where people introduce it. Um, so let me try to be a bit, a bit more explicit about what happens when we extend this cofiber sequence, okay? Um, and I'm gonna say this in spaces, but as I said, when I'm talking about things like cones and cylinders, you can usually make sense of these in an arbitrary model category. Um, so, uh, let me draw this diagram I was drawing before again. Um, so we said that Z is supposed to be the homotopy push out of this square. Um, a way to be a bit more precise about that is we can make everything cofibrant. Let's say that X and Y are cofibrant, and let's replace the point with the cone on X. Okay, so when we write Z, we mean the cone on X glued to X or glued to Y along X. Um, and likewise, we have an inclusion from Y into a contractible object called the cone on Y. And the home until we push out of the right hand square is supposed to be the, the the literal push out of this square. Okay, so this is cone on X glued to Y along X, and then all of that is glued to the cone on Y along Y. Um, however, uh, the uh, Let's see, what, what are we doing here? We, we are, um, this, uh, this object here can be identified with, um, well, first of all, we could, we could rearrange the parentheses so it looks like this. Um, 
this cancels out. Uh, so this is the same as the cone on x glued to the cone on y along x. And now all this space is doing is it's a contractible space or contractible object in our model category um, that's supposed to have an inclusion or a co-vibration from x. Um, so as a space under x, we can identify this up to homotopy with any other with any other contractible space that has a co-vibration from x. Um, and uh, the canonical example of such a space is the cone on x. Okay, so this is equivalent to cone on x and glued to the cone on x along x, which is one model for the suspension of x. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, so now what we want to do is we want to take this one step further. Um, so we've identified the, the, the cofiber of this map with the suspension of X. And now um, we want to take one more cofiber and identify that somehow with the, with the suspension of Y. Um, and uh, yeah, let me erase some stuff. So we want to take the, the the cofiber of this map um, if we've written both of these both of these objects in the form they are here um, then this map as written is a cofibration. Uh, so rather than replacing this by the cone on this, um, we could take the literal push out of the square. And that would again model the homotopy cofiber. Um, so taking the literal push out gives us a uh, point glued to y along the cone on y, which is again a model for the suspension of y. Um, so uh, let me draw a picture of this um, in addition to this diagram. Uh, I find this, like there's, there's something like incredibly confusing about this. Um, and uh, I don't know, somehow uh, a picture like this uh, I find helps. Um, so, right, I'm gonna erase my diagram now. So here's y, here's x. If we want to take the cofiber of this map, we do that by attaching a cone to x. Um, so, uh, right, so right here we have a copy of the cone on x, and this entire thing is, a, is, um, is the cofiber of the map. Um, and in spaces, the cone on x, in, in pointed spaces, let's say, um, the cone on X can be modeled as uh, X times an interval mod X times zero, as well as um, mod the base point times the whole interval. Um, so there's a, there's a coordinate, there's an interval coordinate on, on this cone that goes from zero at the cone point to one at the, at the spot where it's glued onto Y. Um, so now we would like to take the, the cofiber of the inclusion of Y. And the way that we do that is by attaching a cone to Y. So, so here's a copy of the cone on X. Here's a copy of the cone on Y. Um, and since both of these things are cones, they have coordinates attached to them. 
the, the coordinate for the cone on X goes from zero to one where it meets the cone on Y, and the coordinate for the cone on Y goes from one to zero. Now finally, because um, the cone on X glued to Y is a subcomplex of this entire space, to form the cofiber of the, of the inclusion of that subcomplex, we can just quotient by it. So the cofiber um, is, uh, looks, looks something like this. Okay, so this is a copy of the, the cone on Y mod y. We've shrunk all this down to a point, and again it's indexed by a coordinate, and the coordinate goes from one at the left-hand side to zero at the right-hand side. Um, on the other hand, we can identify this space with the cone on it, with, sorry, we can identify this entire object with the suspension of X by crushing out the right half, which is contractible. Okay, and if we do that, so if we if we crush out everything to the to the right hand side of this coordinate, um, we get this space, which is the suspension of X, and it has a coordinate going from zero to one. Okay, so the the, the reason that I'm drawing all of these um, all of these terrible pictures is uh, is to point out that um, the there's been a reversal in the coordinate. If we think about this map as a map from something equivalent to the suspension of X to the suspension of Y, um, in this case the coordinate goes from zero to one, and over here the coordinate goes from one to zero. Um, so uh, this is sort of a, a, a visual argument um, for uh, the following um, assertion. Uh, which is that if we start with the map F from X to Y, we take its cofiber, we take the cofiber of that, And then we take the cofiber of that. This map should be identified not with the suspension of F, but with minus the suspension of F, where this minus indicates that the coordinate has been reversed. Okay. Now you might be thinking this statement doesn't have a whole lot of content to it. Um, when we're talking about these cofibers, we're talking about some, some essentially some colimits, um, and the colimit is only well defined up to isomorphism, and likewise a homotopy colimit is only well defined uh, up to homotopy equivalence. Um, so we should be able to replace this map by actually the suspension of f, not minus the suspension of f, um, and we would still get this. This would still be a a cofiber sequence if we had suspension of f here rather than minus suspension. Um, so, uh, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not really like stating, what am I trying to say? Um, but what I'm trying to say is that if you get rid of the sign here, you introduce some other signs somewhere else. Um, so somehow there, there are some signs that start to pop up in some places and this is one of the natural places that they come in. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of saying this just as a heads up. If you read more about this, you'll start to see these signs and, and they can get somewhat confusing. Any questions? Um, yeah, so you, yeah. you were saying you can do this in a general model category. Right. Um, right. And I assume that what happens is you have this map from the co-product of the thing to itself to the cylinder object, right. and you the minus sign is introduced by pre-composing that with a twist. Yes, so the, um, let's see, I was gonna say this later, but maybe I should just say it now. Um, the, the suspension of an object in a model category has some extra structure on it. 
which um, and, and what you just said is one of the ways of describing it. Uh, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say it, I'll say that now. Um, So the suspension of X um, is what's sometimes called an H cogroup object. Uh, which is to say that um, it's a, a group object in the homotopy category. Not a group object, a, a co-group object in the homotopy category. Um, so th there are a couple different ways to see this. Um, one is that uh, we've been thinking of the suspension of X as two copies of the cone on X to lead together along X. And there's a map that um, quotients everything by this middle copy of X. So So if you take the cofiber of the inclusion of X in the middle, then um, then uh, what you get is something that looks like this, where these are glued together along, along the point. Um, but the cone X mod X is another model for the suspension of X. So this can be identified with suspension of X wedge suspension of X. Okay, since we're working in a point of model category, so it doesn't really matter whether I write wedge or, or co-product, um, but sometimes it's a bit more familiar to write wedge. So, um, so there's this natural map from the suspension of X to the suspension of X wedge suspension of X. Uh, and you can show that it's um, it's uh, co-associative, um, it's co-unital, and this um, this minus sign that I was just talking about, where you reverse the coordinate in this description, that corresponds to switching the two copies of the cone on X, um, and that's the inversion on the co-group. Okay, uh, so this is um, again, this is something we're familiar with in spaces, but it's actually true in a general model category. Uh, one, one thing that this implies is um, if you have some other object Y, then maps from suspension of X into Y is a uh, group. And sorry, when I write the brackets, I mean uh, the set of homotopy classes that maps from the suspension of X into Y is a group. Okay. Um, and likewise, If I map from a double suspension into some other object and take a set of homotopy classes of maps, this is an abelian group. Okay, so this is um this is a consequence of the Ekman Hilton argument, uh, which I'd be happy to talk about more if anyone wants to talk about it. Um, But it's essentially this, the same argument that you use to prove that higher homotopy groups are abelian. Um, and finally, uh, if if you're given some map from x to x prime, then there's a natural map from homotopy classes of maps from suspension x prime into y to homotopy classes of maps from suspension x into y, uh, given by precomposing of f. Um, and this is a group homomorphism. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, dually, the, the loop space of an object is a group object in the homogeneity category. Um, so let's see how little I can, uh, I can write and say this. So loops X is an H group object. In other words, a group object in the homotopy category. If you take any other space Y, then maps, or any other object Y, then maps from Y to loops X up to homotopy as a group. Um, this group is natural in X, so uh, given some math like this, post-composing with, I guess I should say post-composing with loops on that map um, is a group homo homomorphism. And maps into a double loop space up to homotopy is an abelian group. So, um, okay, so let's let's bring this back to uh, to fiber sequences and cofiber sequences. Um, so as we were saying, you can start with some map from X to Y, you can take its cofiber, and then you can start continuing the sequence to the right. And this is obviously an analog of this, of this Koopa sequence that we saw in spaces. So just as in spaces, you can take this entire sequence and map it into some other space. Um, so given some space, I don't know, W, you get a sequence of sets of homotopy classes like this. And this is a long exact sequence. Okay. At this point, when you're mapping in um, suspensions, it becomes a long exact sequence of groups. Uh, further on, uh, once you're mapping in double sequence, double suspensions, it becomes a long exact sequence of abelian groups. Um, and here, in general, it's just a long exact sequence of pointed sets. Uh, again, the way that you prove this is it, it suffices to show. Um, since, since each sequence of three terms here is a, is a cofiber sequence, um, it suffices to show that given three terms like this, you get a sequence which is exact in the middle. Um, and uh, you can show this through some, through some formal model categorical version of the argument that we made for spaces. Uh, so this is a long exact sequence of pointed sets. And there's a dual statement for starting with the fiber sequence. Um, you get a long exact sequence uh, uh, coming from extending that fiber sequence to the left. Um, so in the category of spectra, one of the things that we've learned about spectra is, question? Okay, in the category of spectra, uh, Every x is every x is the suspension of something. Um, actually, it's equivalent to the suspension of loops x. And every map is a is a suspension map. Um, so, given a map from x to y, this map is um, homotopic to or is, it, is equivalent to a um, 
a map of Discord. So up to homotopy, F is the suspension of, of some other map. Um, and likewise, uh, every space is also a double suspension, and every map is a is a double suspension of some other map. Um, so uh, once you start forming a, a uh, right, so so what this means is that um, maps from X into W for any W is automatically an abelian group. Because X is secretly a double suspension. Um, and if we precompose, if we if we have some map from X to Y, we uh, or for, if we have a map from Y to X that we precompose with, um, well, up to homotopy, uh, F is the double suspension of some map. Um, so this map is a map of abelian groups. And the sequence induced by this is a long exact sequence of abelian groups. Um, and like you can make dual statements about instead of mapping out of your spectra, you can map into your spectra. Okay, so this is one of the nice features of a, a, um, of a stable model category. And the only thing we needed to know to get this is, is these two facts, um, which, which ultimately came from the fact that suspension and loops are inverses to each other. Any questions so far? Yes, yeah, sorry, I have one. Uh, can you maybe say again what you're saying about uh, something being a double suspension? And yeah, so why, why do we need that or why is it useful? Right, so I keep saying double suspension because um, in general, uh, mapping out of a suspension only gives you a group structure. Mapping out of a double suspension gives you an abelian group structure. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Okay. I mean, you should think about like pi, pi one is maps out of a circle, with, and that's a group that's not necessarily abelian, but the higher homotopy groups are always abelian. And does it being a double suspension just follow from doing this construction you've written uh, twice, like writing it as suspend loop x, and then suspend loop with something else? Right, yeah. So, so the, the point is that suspension and loops are inverse to each other up to homotopy. So you can also write this. Suspension, suspension to loops 2x is equivalent to x. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, uh, I posted something in the Discord earlier that was like, uh, apparently when, when this, when it was first discovered that like, like some, some topologists in the thirties were like really disappointed that the higher homotopy groups were abelian and, um, and Czech was, was writing some paper about like defining the higher homotopy groups, and they persuaded him not to publish his paper because they thought the result was so disappointing. Because uh, they thought like pi one is really interesting, so we're we're searching for some sort of generalization of that, um, and all you give us is this abelian bullshit. Uh, yeah. So. Um, what a thing to be disappointed about. Um, the so you get a group structure from mapping out of out of the suspension or into loops, are they the same? If you take, like, if you take X and Y and you take the group structure on suspension X into Y, is that the same? That is a great question. Group structure in some sense as the- Yes, yes they, they are the same. Um, so let's, let's write that down actually. So there's this adjunction, um, which again exists in an arbitrary point in model category, uh, which says that this is isomorphic to this. Um, and this is an isomorphism of, of groups. Uh, and one of the ways to see that is if your model category is, um, 
is a topological model category. So it's, it's compatibly enriched, tensored, and cotensored over spaces, and that, and that, that op those operations respect the model structure. Um, then one of the ways of thinking about these sets of homotopy classes is this is pi zero of the space of maps in your in your model category from suspension x to y. And this adjunction really exists on the level of spaces. Um, this has to do, so, so first of all, you can show that, uh, that um, suspension x is also modeled by tensoring your space, your object x with s1. Okay, I'll, I'll say why this is true in a second. Um, and, uh, and then you can use the compatibility of the enrichment and the tensoring to, to pull out the circle. So this is the same. Uh, so this is uh, the same as pi zero of loops in spaces of maps from x to y. And likewise, um, the space of maps from x into loops y can also be identified with this. Um, so uh, I, I should write that down too. This is also. So in other words, this statement about homotopy classes and maps is what you get um, when you take pi zero of this, this statement, which is a statement about the, the entire um, mapping spaces. Uh, and I guess, I mean, so more generally, not only is pi zero of this, of this a group, but, or not only is pi zero of this mapping space a group, but the mapping space itself is a, um, I mean, is a, is a loop space, uh, which, is, which is sort of a homotopical version of a group in spaces. Okay, so why is this true? So this has to do with the fact that this, um, and this is kind of beyond some, beyond the stuff that we've talked about, but, um, but uh, I, I think, I don't know, it's, it's pretty interesting, so I might as well show it to you anyway. So this tensoring on a topological model category is a functor from, uh, let's say, pointed spaces. And the axioms of the topological model category imply that this is a Quillen bifunctor. Um, which is something with a horribly complicated definition. Uh, but one of the things that it should imply is if I fix a, let's say, a cofibrant object of M, um, then, so let's say I fix. Uh, Let's say I fix x in M. So now I really just have a functor from top star to M, um, which is I tensor all my spaces with x, and that should be a Quillen functor. Um, and in particular, I, sorry, that should be a left Quillen functor um, if this is cofibrant. Um, and one of the things that left Quillen functors do is they preserve homotopy equivalence. Okay, so why does that matter? Well, um, let's take uh, let's take this diagram in pointed spaces. Okay, the homotopy push out of this is the suspension of um, of s zero, which is s one. And if we tensor the whole diagram with x. Well, the claim is that since this is a left Quillen functor, the homotopy colimit is supposed to be preserved. Um, and what we get, oh, and then the other thing is uh, S0 is in space is, a, is equivalent to point disjoint median point. Um, so tensoring the whole diagram with X you're going to push out a diagram that looks like this. Um, and 
and uh, and well, you can show that this diagram is is equivalent to the to the standard diagram we've been using to talk about the suspension. Okay, if you you quotient by a copy of x everywhere, um, then you get back to here. So the push out of this is the suspension of x. Because it's equivalent to the push out of this. Okay, so the, the upshot of that is that the, the suspension of X is the same as um, S1 tensor to X using the tensoring coming from the topological model category structure. Anyway, um, right, okay, so, so one more thing that I want to say related to these, these group and co group structures. Um, which is going to be especially relevant if you've been uh, reading Barnes and Reutzheim a lot. Um, so they like to talk about the cofiber of a map. Let's say we have a map from X to Y. Um, so they say that this has a, has a coaction of, of the suspension of X. Um, and, uh, and one of the ways to think about that is as we said, the cofiber of the map from y to z is a map from z to the suspension of x. Um, and so in particular, uh, we can think of this map from z to the suspension of x as, as factoring through a map to z coproduct suspension of x. And then you can show that actually this, this is coming from the, the, uh, the coaction of the cogroup object suspension x. Um, Another way to think about this is that uh, another way to think about this is that we can model Z as clone on X glued to Y along X. Um, and now just like we did to construct the cogroup structure on suspension of X, we can quotient by this X in the middle. Um, so we quotient everything by x, then then we get a map to this. Um, sorry, this is not quite right. Let me back up a second. Uh, let's let's say that that x to y is a cofibration of uh, of cofibered objects. Um, so so then quotienting by x gives you a thing like this. Um, and this can be identified with this suspension of X, and this can be identified with Z. Okay, so this is this is another way to recover the coaction. Um, people are more familiar with this in the dual case. So in the dual case, if you start with a fiber sequence of spaces, let's say, then one of the things that you learn about this is that there's an action of the loop space of B on the fiber of F. Um, which again you can think of as coming from this this boundary map in the in the fiber sequence. Okay, uh, so let me see. I don't have a, a lot more time. I want to start talking about um, about uh, comparing cofiber and fiber sequences. Um, and I'm not. Oh yeah, sorry. I, I, let me say one more thing about this about this coaction business. So there, there's another way that we that we talked about um, when we first introduced homotopy to limits. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. Paul. Like your uh, your camera went out of focus somehow. Like it refocused. Uh -oh. I have literally no idea why that would happen. Um, uh, well, maybe maybe it's the right time to stop anyway. Um, I mean, here I can I can stop my video and restart it, but I don't know if that will actually help anything. Oh, it did help. It did help something. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, why don't we? 
why don't we call it a day for now and and hopefully by next week i'll have figured out my internet issues and and not have to go through this rigmarole again um so let me stop the recording